Nature showered so many gifts on this man that he was called a genius in his lifetime. A great artist, sculptor, musician, genius mathematician, engineer, and anatomist, Leonardo da Vinci searched for the kernel of truth aimed at learning and depicting harmony. I chose the nature to be my tutor, the teacher of all teachers. The great Italian, Leonardo da Vinci, was born on April 15, 1452, in the suburbs of the small Italian town of Vinci. The illegitimate son of a Venetian notary, he was brought up in the family of his father and was provided with good elementary education. The boy's extraordinary talent became apparent since early childhood. Leonardo was interested in mathematics, as well as poetry, music, and painting. His father was impressed by the exceptional abilities of his son and sent him to Florence to the art studio of his friend, the well-known artist and sculptor Andrea Verrocchio. Leonardo's behavior was rather eccentric, but nevertheless he studied hard and soon left behind not only his classmates, but the teacher himself. Verrocchio, who was working on the picture The Baptism of Christ, once asked Leonardo to complete the portions that remained unfinished, the landscape and the angel to the left of Christ. The young artist completed it with such a great degree of perfection that the old master admitted defeat, gave up painting once and for all, and vowed to do only sculpture from then onwards. In 1480, Leonardo got admission to the Academy in Florence, founded by Lorenzo Medici. But after two years, he left for Milan, where he joined the court of Ludovico Sforza as the court sculptor. He had to attend to all types of work at the court of the Duke of Milan. He created stage decors, organized wedding ceremonies and family celebrations, designed the drawings of a cathedral building, and elaborated a town water supply system. Simultaneously, he worked on his picture, The Virgin of the Rocks, and the famous frescoes of the Last Supper for the monastery of Santa Maria delle Grazi. At the court of Duke Sforza, Leonardo was called Homo Universale, the Universal Man. After Milan was seized by the French, Leonardo da Vinci lost his patron, and he went to Mantua first, then to Venice, where he worked as a military engineer for some time. And finally, he returned to Florence. He stayed at the court of Cesare Borgia for about one year, before he joined forces with Michelangelo on an important commitment to paint the frescoes in the great hall of the Palazzo Vecchio. A year later, Leonardo began the work on the La Gioconda, the painting that immortalized him through the ages. For 500 years, painters struggled to recreate the mysterious smile of Mona Lisa, but her secret was never solved. In 1504, the painter's father died. Leonardo took the loss very hard. He was almost on the verge of a nervous breakdown and could hardly hold a brush in his shaking hands for several months. He went to Milan on invitation from Louis XII, where he stayed for a couple of years. And then, he headed to Rome to paint a picture under the order of Pope Leo X. Leonardo hoped to lead a comfortable life of the greatest Italian artist, but was surprised to see that the people crowned with laurels his rivals, Raphael and Michelangelo. By the time he was 60, Leonardo had no means of subsistence. As a rule, a painter would have a rich sponsor or protector in those days, but Leonardo had none. Wealthy citizens didn't compete in hiring him, probably because he started a lot of new projects and finished only a few of them. Though da Vinci's fame as a painter lived through the ages, he only created about a dozen pictures during his lifetime. Was he disappointed that he left so many projects unfinished? Was he depressed by the questions that remained unanswered in his eagerness to cognize science? Was he lonely? We will never know.
As he got fed up with court intrigues, Leonardo da Vinci returned to Milan, where he was introduced to Francois I. The king and the artist cherished kindly feelings for one another. Leonardo accepted the monarch's invitation to become his court painter and to move to France. It was there, in the Clos Lucci Castle, where the great da Vinci died on the 2nd of May, 1519. The King Francois I reacted in a manner very unlikely of a monarch when he got to know of his death. He cried like a baby. Leonardo left more than 7,000 pages of notes and sketches. Among his manuscripts, one can find the works on mathematics, mechanics, physics, astronomy, geology, botany, anatomy, and physiology. The genuine scientist was ahead of his own time. Many ideas and inventions of Leonardo da Vinci, such as helicopter, parachute, different types of machines, were realized only in the 20th century.